Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. I'm Shireen Bhan. We're coming to you from Monte Carlo from the EY World Entrepreneur of the Year Awards. And I'm here with the EY World Entrepreneur representing India, Uday Kotak. Mr. Kotak, appreciate you joining us. Same time last year, when the government had just been sworn into office, you said, Achhe din a gaye. Then we had a conversation a couple of months later and you said, Achhe din a rahe hai. A few months later at the World Economic Forum, when we spoke, you said, Achhe din dheere dheere aayenge. Where we stand today, what's the deal? I think you've got to really define Achhe din in a particular manner. Okay. First, if you look at the macroeconomics, current account, inflation, fiscal deficit, Achhe din are there because mm. you're significantly better than what you were right. last year. Right. Yes, oil has helped, but all these three factors are very much under control compared to what they were last mm. year. So the, from the point of view of macroeconomic stability, we've made a lot of progress. Okay. However, when you look at the combination of, at some level, India has been a good boy in a bad world. Mm. So if you look at easy monetary policy by the US, by Japan, by Europe yeah. and now China. Yeah. India has maintained a good discipline both on monetary policy and fiscal policy. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that, you then say that we are ready to ensure sustainable macroeconomic conditions, mm. even if it means growth comes with a little bit of a lag mm. and comes slower in terms of the trajectory. Okay. But I'm still of the view that India is on a positive growth path, mm. but but dhire dhire. Okay, what does dhire dhire now mean? Do you believe that maybe at the end of the calendar year we are actually going to see a turnaround? That means in H2 we are going to see a real turnaround whether it's corporate earnings, whether it is demand, whether it is consumption. I think Shireen, another important point which is keeping India under a little bit of pressure is excessive leverage yeah. of large parts of India. Corporate India, India yeah. So that leverage needs to be recognized either as a problem mm. and but or... But isn't it recognized as a problem already? Not fully. I don't think uh, there's a full recognition of what needs to be done with the excess leverage. Mm. So we need to correct balance sheets of corporate India mm. and their impacts on banks and really get our act together on fundamental structure of Indian balance sheets. Mm. And that I think is an important point where I think there is a clear role for de-bottlenecking, I mm. think some of it has happened, but a lot more can happen. But there is some level where recognizing reality is as important. Recognizing reality by the promoters or recognizing reality by banks? Both. Because promoters have to be clear that either they bring in new capital or they run the risk of losing their companies. Mm. And banks to be clear, what is the fair value of their debt? Mm. So you don't then see any significant turnaround as far as corporate earnings are concerned? My sense, at least over the next my sense eight is months. corporate earnings turnaround, I am more of the view we will see it towards end of FY16, which is probably closer in the fourth quarter mm -hmm. is when I see it. And of course, we have to watch it and we've got to work for it. Unlike the past, where a lot of Indian business were able to show corporate earnings yeah. by quick arbitrage, mm. this is a time for hard work getting the balance sheets right mm. and building a sustainable business. Mm. It's not a quick fix. It is not about steroids. It's not about steroids. You're absolutely right. But speaking of steroids, let's talk about the equity markets. And it looks like the Chinese market is on steroids at this point mm -hmm. in time. And it seems to be coming at the cost of the Indian equity markets. Today, uh, we're down about 4% for the week as far as the, our markets are concerned on the Nifty specifically. Do you see the significant volatility that we've now seen over the last few weeks continuing? Do you see the markets correcting? even sharply from this point? See, China looks like a bubble. I'm not close enough, but the sense I get is when you open a few million retail brokerage accounts yeah. a week, yeah. it feels and looks like a bubble. And a bubble may have short-term joy, mm. but creates sustainable pain, as we have seen even in the case of Japan, or the cause of the global financial crisis in the US. Mm. Therefore, I would much rather India doesn't go down the bubble route, and to a certain extent, between May, 6, May 2014 and now, we have seen excessive exuberance in markets. Mm. So markets are coming to reality with the fact that growth will be gradual, though sustainable. Mm. So what then is your growth outlook? The government is still holding on to its projection of 8% plus growth for mm. FY16. Given where things are and given the fact that numbers don't seem to be adding up, look at what core sector tells you and then look at what uh, the headline GDP number tells mm -hmm. you. In that context then, what is the kind of growth outlook? And also linked to that, 
what do you see in terms of further uh, monetary action from the Reserve Bank? Because the governor said he's front-loaded the rate cut. What more can we expect? See, she, first of all, I'm confused between the new GDP and the old GDP. Everybody is, sir. But if I go with the new GDP, we are talking about March 2000. 15 new GDP numbers at about 7.3 percent, but the GVA, GVA yeah. being much lower for the last quarter. Therefore, if 7.3 is the average for last year, I would be happy if we did in 2015-16 7.5 plus, hmm. and that is still a progress, but a steady upward gradual progress. But we must not at the same time compromise on current account, fiscal stability, and ensure that inflation remains under control. Hmm. Rate cut? Do you anticipate one more rate cut in this calendar year or do you think that we're done for now? I may be a contrarian, but my view is in calendar 2015, hmm. there is a possibility of one more 25 basis so points. So between October and December? More towards the end of the year. This is what my belief is. And having said that, we've got to watch what's happening in the US and hmm. other markets. And I don't know whether people have observed one very interesting fact which has happened between January and now in Indian bond markets. We're talking about rate yeah. cut, rate cut. The repo rate in January was 8%. Hmm. It is 7.25 today. Yeah. So you have seen a 75 basis points drop, drop. in repo. Yeah. But the 10 year government bond, hmm. which was 7.76 in January, is 8 today. So hmm. it's gone up. So there is something which the market is saying, hmm. which is actually keeping the long bond fixed interest high. Hmm. And we got to ask why. Yeah. Uh, quick take as far as the currency is concerned before I talk to you about uh, what's happening at, uh, at the bank. Uh, the rupee, and we've heard from the government, we've heard from the Reserve Bank, and the Reserve Bank has said that unless there is, you know, unnecessary volatility, the, the bank won't intervene. Uh, 64, 65, where do you see the rupee trading in the short term? I think around 65 is not a bad level, and we got to ensure that there is some depreciation of the rupee because Indian inflation is higher than global inflation, and it has to reflect in uh, the rupee valuation adjusted for productivity. Mm. Therefore, a three odd percent or a four odd percent depreciation of the rupee over a year is not a bad thing. It's good because that keeps us competitive. Mm. And one of the things which is a reality of easy money policy globally is they keep depreciating their exchange rates. Mm. Look at where the euro has come down. It's 1.10 or mm. 1.11. Mm. It used to be 1.35, 1.4. That is making Europe competitive. Mm. Therefore, India's competitiveness on trade has to be kept in mind and we should not think about rupee only in absolutes, but look at a 3 to 4 percent depreciation every year. Okay. Speaking of competitiveness, one quick question on, on rates because the RBI governor is saying that, listen, I've done 75 basis points. It's the banking system that needs to start transmitting. We've seen banks move between 15 basis points and 25 basis points. What's going on there? Is there really room for banks to reduce right. lending rates significantly more aggressively? I think the key issue for banks is cost of money and that is linked to deposit rates. Now, when you look at deposit rates, deposit rates are competing with a number of savings rates in the marketplace, including tax-free bonds, including a number of schemes like uh, national savings schemes, Kisan savings schemes. In most of those, yeah. even today, rates are eight and a half to right. nine. Therefore, how do banks drop their deposit rates? And I think that is the big challenge. So what is then the point of the finance minister calling PSU bank chiefs together to talk about how we can actually bring interest rates down? I think what do my, we my view is that there may be over the next few weeks there may be some room but I don't think the room is dramatic and look at the reverse when the rates were increased from 7.25 repo to 8, 8.5 yeah. banks did not increase the base rates in the same ratio either mm. so I think we need to get a balance the banks can reduce their base rates a little mm. but the stickiness of the deposit market because of the overall savings market including government savings rates mm. will put a floor on the ability of banks to drop deposit rates which are a key factor for base rates.